Guess what the number one device is for LinkedIn? What is it? It's the computer. So wow. you might be like, well, why is that important? It's actually very important when you think about the mindset and intention of the end user. Thank you for joining me on the Investing for Freedom podcast. I am super stoked for this episode today because not only are we bringing a subject expert to the table, I feel like I actually know that my life is going to be changed today just from the conversation that we were just having. Um, Melissa Hanal has been a good friend of my wife's for a long time. And I can't tell you how many times Karen and I have had a conversation about me getting connected with Melissa so that I could understand LinkedIn. And over the last couple of years, I would say four or five years, actually, I've put a lot of time and energy into uh, social media, Instagram specifically, uh, just because it was the natural place for me. I enjoyed Instagram. It was the path of least resistance. And over the last year, like I've spent a lot of time realizing that, and as Melissa said off camera, it wasn't a waste of time, but really a lot of my business when it comes to investing and the real estate investing, um, my, my clientele, we're, you know, we, we do a lot of work with um, high net worth individuals, accredited investors. We only take accredited investors in our fund. And I just realized that a lot of them are not there on Instagram. And so the last year, year and a half, I've really been thinking about like, you know, where are these people? And I've had a lot of conversations around Twitter and LinkedIn and, uh, you know, we're doing pretty well with Facebook ads. And uh, Melissa and I were talking about this off camera, but going where your audience is, is extremely important. And so as we get into this today, we're going to learn a little bit about Melissa's background, how she got out of the corporate world. I think she said she was a corporate burnout, uh, but we'll kind of talk about all that. And then what she's currently doing. And I'm excited because we're going to do a little bit of coaching for me today, but then also um, I think I'm going to join your program. So, uh, you know, I think I know my audience pretty well, and I think you guys are going to love this. I think it's going to be beneficial. And at the end of the day, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't join me in Melissa's program. So Melissa, thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And anytime I can educate folks on the LinkedIn platform, I know we're going to go a little bit into my journey, but it literally LinkedIn got me out of corporate. So <laughs> the platform itself is what I use to grow my first business to get out of corporate to this day. Um, it's been a game changer for me and, and all of our clients that, that we coach. So I'm excited to just, um, shed light on an un misunderstood social media platform. Yeah. I've had so much resistance around it because I feel like when I go there, um, and maybe it's just cause I don't spend enough time in it, but every time I go in there, I have like 87 messages and I just feel like it, I just get overwhelmed because I feel like they're all just trying to sell me something. And, and so then I think what, you know, my resistance has probably been a little bit like, you know, how do I cut through the noise if everybody's selling something? Um, so anyway, that's been my resistance. Yeah. And it's so interesting and I'm sure we'll get into this, but, um, for any of your followers who follow Gary Vaynerchuk, he talks about this, that the people go over to LinkedIn and they'll pay like for a premium account, which is like sales navigator, which gives you like the unlimited opportunity to like message people. And that is just like spam over on Instagram and Facebook. And so just from the get go, what I want to inspire your audience about with LinkedIn is that our clients and what we teach, you get absolute authentic, phenomenal conversations. And with people on the platform without paying a dollar for those premium, um, you know, pieces for LinkedIn, you don't need any of that. And as a matter of fact, Gary V talks about this, that that's where people, people, uh, you know, they're spamming and they're bolus sending out messages that are inauthentic. And you don't need that to be wildly successful on the platform. I've, I've scaled multiple millions in revenue in my business with a free account. And it's more about having, and we'll get into this, but the right network, it can be even a couple hundred people. It doesn't have to be hundreds of thousands of people. But when you curate the right network on the platform, it is a profit producing engine and it's a pipeline producing engine, but you just have to fine tune who you're connected with and, and you know, how you're active on the platform. Yeah, I'm so excited to get into this. Before we do, you've got an event coming up. Um, yes. Let's just touch on that briefly because Kara and I are going to be there and I'm so excited about it. Yes, and you guys are going to be talking all things money. Um, so this is our second year, Burnout to All Out. Um, 
with the focus on elevating, elevating your business, elevating your life and elevating your network. And so I truly believe we need all three to be happy, healthy, wealthy individuals. Um, you have to be surrounded by the right network. Um, but you also have to have, be really rooted and grounded from a life skill, um, you know, energetic, uh, spiritual perspective, and then also, um, business, right? So we actually are covering all three with subject matter experts in business, like you guys coming in talking about money, um, to the energetics and the science behind how we take care of our bodies to perform, um, down to really breaking out into, um, networking sessions where I know we're all just one introduction away from a completely different business. Cause every time I show up to the table, to the right network, right. Um, so many doors open up for me. And so that is really a huge piece of the event is just opening up doors of connections for folks along with killer content to grow people personally and professionally. Yeah. I'm so excited. It's in Nashville. We're going to have a blast. It's going to be great. All right. So you actually were in corporate America and you utilized your methodology to leave your job and do what you're doing today. So you're not just some, you know, coach out there that's like teaching some theory out of a book. Give, give me the story. Give me the background. Yeah. And so it started with one business. We'll talk about that. And now we have about five different businesses and we've leveraged LinkedIn for all of them. And um, for your audience, just so they know, I, I didn't, it, I, I had done over a million in revenue before I ever spent a dollar on Facebook ads. And I want that to, to sink in for those of your listeners who um, are considering investing in ads. Maybe that's like, you know, uh, a barrier to, to the game for you. Um, you know, one of the best places to, to optimize time and money, I believe is on LinkedIn. Um, so I was in corporate America. I had climbed the top of Mount Everest. I was in an executive role, um, making multiple six figures, which at the time seemed amazing. I was in the golden, golden handcuffs and I was miserable in my career. Um, I did not own my time. And I know this is something you talk about a lot. Time is like the most valuable asset that we have. And I didn't realize that till I was in my career, you know, 200K in debt with college loans with my back against the wall and a job where there had been a huge reorg, reorganization. And I was basically told, we know you have two little kids. We know that your geography was North Carolina, but now we're giving you half the country. And if you want to keep your job, you will be on an airplane four days a week. And that was the first time in my life. I truly just felt like I realized the difference between financial freedom and just making money. Right. That was the moment I realized I had no freedom and I just mm. had a paycheck. Right. Um, and so that's when I started to look at different ways to start my own business, get out of college loan debt and rewrite my history. So um, I got into an e-commerce business where um, it was in the health and wellness space. And my first thought was my home base has been LinkedIn as a working professional, which means that there's a lot of other working professionals on this platform. And we'll talk a little bit more about the activity over there in a little bit. But I actually went to work leveraging that platform instead of Facebook and Instagram and realized that my methodologies worked beautifully. Um, and my marketing strategies and my networking strategies worked beautifully. And I was able to actually um, match my corporate income and retire, if you will, get the heck out of corporate America within a year and a half. And from there, I hired my first business coach because I realized as entrepreneurs, we never stop investing in ourselves. Um, that was not the mindset I had as a corporate um, person, right? And when I hired that business coach, she said, you really onto something with LinkedIn. It worked for your business, but I believe you could teach other people across the globe how to do this too. And that was four years ago. And um, so about four years ago, I, I launched a course, launched a program. From there, we've um, graduated probably over a thousand clients through our program driving, um, wild success over there. Um, and I've launched an agency and a couple masterminds and all the things and all of that to say, um, we, to this day, like LinkedIn as our home base, um, it's been life-changing. Um, and we really enjoy teaching other entrepreneurs and business owners how with less resistance and less time, they can create a massive pipeline and grow a business over there. So amazing. What, what, a, what a great, what a great story. It's exciting. So what, right off the gate, yeah, just kind of coming back to our like discussion, what do you, what do you see is the most resistance that people have? I think I know what mine is, but like, yeah. what are some of the things that people keep them from jumping on the platform? 
Yeah. So I'll, I'll share with you and your listeners can kind of, uh, you know, nod and, and laugh to this when they listen to it. But I would say the average person thinks of LinkedIn as like kind of an older white male in a business suit platform with people posting resumes looking for jobs, right? Um, I encourage your your listeners to go to Bloomberg um, and and l- just type in on Google Bloomberg LinkedIn, and you will see an incredible article that came out literally today to challenges that traditional thought process. It is no longer an older white man job hunting um, platform, but has become a Mecca and a hub for network and growth. Um, it is, they've made so many wild changes on the platform to really focus on the entrepreneur and the small business owner, um, post COVID they've seen massive changes in activity on the platform post COVID specifically. Um, but what I will say is that people think of it, people it's counter it's people think of it as this stuffy old platform. The reality is LinkedIn had its highest revenue year yet this year, had its highest number of users and highest amount of engagement on the platform ever this year. They're up 41% in engagement. And we'll talk about why in just a little bit. Um, The platform, the and, and you guys can fact check me on this, five years in a row, it's been considered the most trustworthy social media platform in the world by social media users, especially post COVID. There's just a lot of garbage that happened on the other platforms and on LinkedIn, people tended to stay, um, kinder (laughs) and less aggressive. If if that's, you know, I, I think, you know, where I'm going with that. Um, so the bottom line is it is no longer the platform it used to be. Um, and if you look at the demographics of the platform today, so let's, let's just jump into that. The, the average, And as your listeners are listening, maybe ask, you ask yourself and think about it is what's the average age of your average ideal client, right? Um, On Instagram and Facebook, the average age is about 21 to 23. So that's your average age. On LinkedIn, it's average is 35. So they're significantly older, right? The average income on Instagram and Facebook is about, again, it's about 23 years old. Um, I'm sorry, 23,000, 23, the average income is about 23,000. Wow. The threshold and average income on LinkedIn is over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, wow. and so, and then we start to think about mindset, like why people are on platforms, right? And you and I, I don't know about you, but I go to Instagram to numb out when I've got like 12 seconds, I'm waiting for my coffee to brew or like my kid is, uh, you know, it's a timeout on the soccer game. But like you and I are movers and shakers in business, right? People are taking radical action. I don't, I don't have a ton of time to like dopamine hit and scroll through Instagram, although it may seem like it because I have a media team that kicks that stuff out. But I, as the end consumer, I'm really not there all that often. But when I am, it's a mindset of zoning out, not making radical change, looking for thought leadership and investing a ton of money in anything, right? And so the thing I want you to think about is the mindset of the LinkedIn user. People go there for authority, right? For your listeners, and maybe we can do this while we're chatting, but Google your name and see if your LinkedIn profile doesn't show up in the first three to four hits, right? From an SEO perspective, there's massive visibility for LinkedIn, but people go there, people go there to look for thought leadership. They go there for personal growth and they go there when, when they're searching to network. Right. And, and, and this is really important for you, Mike, is people think about LinkedIn as being, uh, you know, B2B or just, you know, looking for jobs, but even if it was, which it's not, but even if it was, I want you to think about your end consumer is highly active on LinkedIn when there's disruption in the world, disruption in the economy. You've got some really high net worth people in really high level roles. And I, we talked about this earlier, like my husband, he doesn't even have an Instagram account or a Facebook account. But as a senior vice president, he's constantly on LinkedIn because he has to be. So even if you think about LinkedIn in the traditional setting, your end audience, depending on your business, is still there and you're much more likely to grab their attention on LinkedIn. And they're there because they're taking action. They're there. uh, This is maybe making a couple of assumptions, but given the average income is higher on the platform, the money mindset 
and people just showing up and doing the darn thing to be successful. It's a, it's a specific demographic that's Mm -hmm. showing up over there. Right. Um, and so there's, there's age, there's mindset, right. On, on like why people are over there. And the other thing I want you to think about, because some of your listeners are probably like, well, but they're still Instagram. People are still on Instagram. They're still on Facebook. Yes. But I want you to think about this. Again, I just go back to my husband because he's a great example of like a ton of people, but the, the time, the device, let's the device, the number one device that people use on Instagram and Facebook is their phone, right? What we know about that is they're multitasking. Okay. They're not, they're, 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 they're distracted. They're multitasking. They're sitting at a stoplight. They're, they're on the go. Guess what the number one device is for LinkedIn. What is it? It's the computer. So you might be like, well, why is that important? It's actually very important when you think about the mindset and intention of the end user. So your ideal high net worth client may have been wiped sleep out of their eye that morning and been scrolling on the gram while they were going to the bathroom before it was 6 a.m., but you're not really getting his or her attention. Does that make sense? Now that same high net worth person has their coffee, has their breakfast, sees their kids off to school, they take a shower, get themselves ready, and then they're intentionally sitting down in front of a computer to make things happen. And they go over to LinkedIn to network. And your message is received energetically completely different than the same post that could have come through that feed at 5.30 in the morning when they were still getting sleep out of their eye. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it actually. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally stoked. And the other yeah. thing I will say is from an SEO perspective, what I love about LinkedIn is it's long game. So I think of it a little bit more like YouTube than I do Facebook and Instagram for a couple of reasons. Number one is you can play the SEO game with articles, your headline. There's things you can do on LinkedIn that when people Google, they find you. It's routed right through Google. Um, you can't do that on the other platforms the way you can on LinkedIn. And then also just the longevity of the visibility of your content. So you and I know that you can put together what you think is the most beautiful curated post that's going to be the epic and viral and you put it out and there's some engagement, but literally within 30 minutes, the post is dead. It's gone from the sea of content, never to be seen again, unless somebody actually comes to your page or your, your profile and finds it. And that's not the case on LinkedIn. Um, their algorithms are way less complicated and visibility is through the roof. Number one, because the algorithms are less complicated, your content stays um, visible way longer, right? Um, Number two, because less people are actively posting, and this is important. Yes, there's been hyper growth on the platform due to the economy. Uh, the, the activity on LinkedIn is counter cyclical as there's questions in economy, there's a, there's a spike in activity on LinkedIn, right? People get really active over there. Right. Um, and so you have this interesting cyclical spike, but here's the thing, like you, a lot of people don't know what to post over there. They don't know how to engage, but the, the, the accounts and the activity are through the roof, meaning you have a ton of workers who don't know what to post and they're just watching. And this takes me back to the algorithms. 4% of users on LinkedIn actually post any content at all, which means if you are one of the 4%, your visibility is through the freaking roof and it stays alive for a, are you freaking out right now? (laughs) Freaking out. (laughs) Right? So It is, it's a massive, massive opportunity. And I think that the huge paradigm shift post COVID is that what has happened in the disruption shift with LinkedIn is that pre COVID, we had the highest employment rates in the country in decades, yet we had one of the lowest employment satisfaction rates in decades. So basically pre COVID, everybody had a job and everybody hated their job. And what happened with COVID is people were like, I didn't, I didn't like that job anyway. And with disruption, people question things. And so online entrepreneurship, the gig economy, people leaving corporate at like 
in droves. It's a large majority of our clients in the LinkedIn Method Academy. Um, and so what you have is this mass exodus and heightened activity from the economy, economic standpoint on the platform. When I say mass exodus, all these people who traditionally their home base for social media as a working professional was LinkedIn, and that's where they feel comfortable, right? And so there's massive visibility for these people. And just to get you even more excited and for your listeners, you know, yes, you can be really successful on Instagram. If you post, you know, 18 stories a day, three reels a day, and you can really scale yourself as an influencer, I don't disagree, but that's the definition of consistency on Instagram. On LinkedIn, you can make three to four really awesome thought provoking thought leadership authority like post a week and get 10 times more engagement from those posts than you can for everything you're doing on Instagram. So the definition of consistency is completely different across the platforms. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. And you know, what's crazy. Like I, I did it because you told me to, we can do it while we're live. I, I searched my name and I don't know why I've never seen this before, but like top front page is like LinkedIn. Yes. I don't even do anything with my LinkedIn profile, yes. like hardly ever. Yes. And so for your, uh, you know, for your listeners who are entrepreneurs, business owners with not necessarily, they don't have a web page yet. Like this is your web page. This is how people are finding you. And so for our entry level entrepreneurs, we really coach to this, like let's optimize this because this is how you're being found. Right. Even, um, you and I both know Chris Harder, he and I were going back and forth about LinkedIn because I think with the launch of looking for investors for his app, I think that LinkedIn is like Pandora's box for him. And I took a screenshot for him. He's his number three on Google is his LinkedIn profile. Like, and this is a guy who's really active on Instagram, has a really busy website, um, all the things. And so if you, if you Google your name and you don't like what you see about your write-up on LinkedIn or how people can contact you, you are missing out on market share, right? As a legion. And that's I, I, off the I'm, platforms. <laughs> and, and I'm guilty because like it, what's funny is LinkedIn is like popping up before. So my personal webpage, my podcast webpage shows up above LinkedIn, but none of my business pages show up above LinkedIn. In right. fact, I'm like scrolling down trying to find them. Right. And, and to your point, like, I don't love what's on my LinkedIn page. So at minimum, I, I need to go fix what's there even. Well, and what I, you could do and pro tip for your listeners is all your business pages in the featured section of LinkedIn, you can put hyperlinks. And so like, if you go to my LinkedIn page, you'll see in the featured section are all the hyperlinks for like all the things that we have. So that when people Google you and your LinkedIn page comes up number three and they click on it, it's a triage still to all the things that you have, right? Yeah. Okay. So like legit, I want to stay focused on our conversation, but I, I keep going back to your webpage because I want to sign up for the method Academy. So the minute we're done here, I'm like joining your Academy and uh, it's just crazy. Where, like, where have you been all my life? I'm telling you, it's, it's absolutely game changing for me. And I, I see this all the time. I, I witness it. Clients come in and they've been on a hamster wheel. Some of, I mean, and I've been there too. We're like, you started on Instagram or Facebook, you're getting some traction, you're getting some momentum. And then the, and then the lead generation gets a little flat. And what I find is I get a lot of clients who are working harder than they ever had to generate leads on the platform, other platforms, and they're just exhausted. And I say to them, you're just on the wrong platform with the wrong message. If we can take your genius over here and make some tweaks you're going to work. And I don't mean this to like oversell like LinkedIn, but it's so true. You're going to work way less as far as working the platform and have way more authentic conversations with the right people. And I see it happen month over month when people discover like the real, what we call method on LinkedIn, the light bulb goes off. They're grinning from ear to ear because they can't believe just like the viable, phenomenal conversations they're having with curious people who truly are vetted and the right, like proper leads for them, for their businesses, whether it's a hundred thousand dollar contract as a consultant or, you know, someone looking for somebody to invest in a franchise or a financial advisor looking for like, you know, the right client base. Um, it's just, I mean, I, eventually I figure like it'll get out and the world will take it over, but it just, it's still a best kept secret right now. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned this as we were talking before we started recording, but I'm in a group of you know, guys called Go Abundance. Um, anybody that's listening knows about it because I've been talking about it for five years now. But they're all successful business owners and investors. And there's this entire thread going on about LinkedIn. And nobody has really 
nobody has really said like nobody's figured it out. And yeah. what's crazy is like this isn't even the group of people that like want to leave their jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, these are people that could leave their jobs if they wanted to, or right. they're already gone and business owners. And I'm just like thinking to, to your point, it's such an untapped market, but I think it's because we don't understand it. That's what's got me so excited about joining your, your yeah. thing. And I'm not just saying that because I want people to yeah. sign up. I, we're not even like, we're not, I'm not an affiliate or anything. No. I, just, I don't understand this. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing, just to demystify it. It's really just about building a personal brand and thought leadership over there. And I think that people get intimidated because it's, the previous perception of LinkedIn is kind of this stuffy corporate like business suity kind of whatever. But if you go follow me on LinkedIn, I cuss, like I've got overalls on. Um, I have, you know, a particular like type of personality that is still attracting my authentic audience as a business coach, mentor, and LinkedIn expert with I may be repelling some people, but it doesn't matter because I am my own authentic self that's generating massive leads for people who align to my personality and who I am. And so for your listeners, no matter who you are, I don't want you to think because, well, I don't have a professional degree or I was never in corporate. I don't want you to think this can't be a platform for you. Uh, You know, I've got a client who was a military brat. She calls herself a military brat in Australia, never went to college. Um, has launched three different businesses on the platform. Um, one in apparel, like she does B2B. She's found her distributors from LinkedIn, scaled a multiple six-figure, nice little multiple six-figure revenue for herself with that. Then she got into women in crypto and that's super niche. And she's scaled another multiple six-figure revenue stream exclusively on LinkedIn using that. And this is someone who has less than a thousand people in her network. She just has the right targeted audience in her network. Um, and so that's, that's the key. And now of course there's really highly affluent executives that you can market and you can be a certain brand to market to them. And so what I want to cast a vision to, to your audience is it doesn't matter. Like your audience is there, right? Yeah. Well, so I'm looking at my LinkedIn page. I haven't posted anything for seven months. The last post was seven months ago. Um, so what, what, like, what do you say? We, we talked about this, but if I'm looking for, you know, I guess in three different buckets, I'm, I'm looking for high net worth accredited investors mm-hmm. that are looking for passive income. They want to invest alongside of us in real estate deals that we have going. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple other things that I'm just like really curious about here, Kara and I are getting ready to, we're going to start buying HVAC companies again with a business partner. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, targeting, not only am I like looking for investors, but like targeting, I'm thinking targeting those sellers. I, I have guys who've come in who own HVAC companies, they like, like cleaning businesses, like carpet cleaning businesses, like the whole nine, because on LinkedIn, you can target your marketing geographically. So these guys who have like a bricks and mortar in a, a certain location, LinkedIn's the only social media platform where you can type in like, you know, Austin, Texas, and, and then it's called a Boolean modifier. And then, you know, another clarifying descriptor and then boom, you're growing a targeted audience in that location for your business. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I guess the other thing too, like Kara and I, with our couples community, Um, You know, we're targeting couples that are business owners. They're navigating the challenges of being business owners in a, you know, a busy family with children, et cetera. So what would you advise? Like I haven't posted anything for seven months. Like what, what, what do I do here? So this is what we do. This is a LinkedIn method Academy 101. So um, you said um, that last category, you said we're busy entrepreneurs, married, married entrepreneurs, like in business together. Right. Um, So what you would do is what we call, we call them content pillars. They're probably no different than Instagram or Facebook with what you do. But um, if you've got three niche audiences that you have three specific kind of um, offers or business opportunities for, you want to start building your authority um, in those three areas. So what I would encourage you to do is go pull and repurpose um, content once a week, just dedicate one day a week to like, uh, you know, um, entrepreneurship and, you know, marriage, right? Like you've got a ton of content on that. So I'm sure you've got someone on your team that could just build a pipeline of that content to kick out, let's say marriage Mondays, right? Like marriage and entrepreneurship on Mondays. And then, um, on Wednesdays, you strategically grow your network of HVAC, HVAC owners 
And so, and is a Boolean modifier, B-O-O-L-E-A-N, Boolean, which means when you put HVAC and then the word and, and then you put like Austin, Texas or geographic locations, what happens is LinkedIn is a search engine, unlike the other platform. And it, what it does is it gives you a curated list of only HVAC owners in Austin, Texas. And then you can start working down the line with conversations with those folks. But now, so that you're a thought leader and an expert in this space, you're also going to want to kick out once a week, something around that space as a subject matter expert, right? Um, and the same thing with accredited investors, you have a ton of incredible content around money and investments. And so maybe on Thursdays, it's, you know, it's more focused on content for these accredited investors and the value of making your money work harder for you than you worked for it and all the incredible messaging that you have. I promise you, you could probably just repurpose a ton of your solo podcasts um, and use those as drops. And just to like blow your mind, you can actually stream them as though they're live and get massive engagement. Because if you use a third party um, broadcaster, which um, we don't have time for that here, but it's, it's fairly simple. And we coach to it inside the Academy. Um, you get, you get um, basically immediate notifications to everyone on the platform that you're going live, just like the other platforms, but you're not because you're repurposing it. It's brilliant. So to, to tie that in a bow for you, you would want to create content as a thought leader in all three categories, just separate them out by day. And then each week I would commit once uh, one category per, um, like I, I would want you to grow your network three times a week with one for, um, founders and owners of like, you know, like the, when you think about the entrepreneurs and marriage, right. Um, you're going to be growing a network around founders, CEOs, like there's key buzzwords you can use for small business. Um, and then once a week, you want to be growing your network around the HVAC space or owners in that space. And then the accredited investors is a little bit more interesting. You're probably, um, going to want to search for when you think about high net worth, it's more a matter of this is what's beautiful about LinkedIn is people's job titles. So obviously like your entry level, um, you know, employee is probably not going to be who you're going to grow your network with there, but maybe CEOs, the uh, senior vice presidents. Um, and the other thing you can start doing, because the other thing is I'd, I, I, I want to underscore that LinkedIn is also about networking. It's not about just finding the lead, if you will, but it's finding the, the right network of people who open the floodgates for you to potential high net worth accredited investors, right? So there's um, groups on LinkedIn where you can search like keywords for groups of even certain professions that are already aggregated to invest. Um, and, but then also like looking for those, those, um, buzzwords for titles of like high net worth. And the last thing I would encourage you to do is that your current investors that are of high net worth, especially those who are still working full time, go find them on LinkedIn. And the first thing you should do is look at their networks, because I can guarantee you they're probably connected to some pretty good people that you want to fold into your network because, you know, birds of a feather, right? Yep. Um, so there's a lot of strategies there. And what happens is Mike, once you get a nice little jump in your network, so we call it getting into flow state on LinkedIn. When you get about 500 fresh new contacts, see the reason your feed probably feels drab and boring right now is because you probably haven't strategically added the right people. But once you add, you know, 200 in the, you know, founder and entrepreneur, business owner, those three categories we talked about a total of 500 fresh new people, which by the way, you just want to make sure they're active, right? When you go to ask them to connect with you, when you add those 500 people and you match that with content that they're going to find value in, people engage. And as they engage, your content stays up at the top of the feed. Visibility becomes through the roof. And that is the number one piece most people miss is they'll say, well, I posted some stuff on LinkedIn I never got any engagement. And I'm like, when is the last time you grew your network? And like, I think about like, um, one of our common friends, Kayla Kraft, she was like, well, I grew my network when I was trying to get a job out of nursing school. And I'm like, okay, so 
you now have coaching patch packages for like a hundred K a year for business coaching, but your network on LinkedIn are a bunch of girls you graduated from nursing school with. And you're wondering why nobody's engaging with your content. You have to have the right audience in the feed to appreciate what you're putting out. So if your feed is drab, celebrate that it's on you to go find and, and connect with the right people who then are going to really appreciate what you, what you put out. And it doesn't take a whole lot. Yeah. So you said one thing that I just want to, um, when I'm looking for these people, if they're not active, uh -huh. do I not want to connect with them? Well, so here's the key. If they're not super active, you can connect with them because they, like when I think about my husband, he's not super active, meaning he doesn't post on the platform, but he's active in the sense that he's in that 96% who aren't posting, but he's highly active on the platform. Um, but the, the, the thing that, to keep in mind is that when I say active, you at least want to see that they're liking and they're commenting. They might not necessarily be posting, but um, what I've seen, and this is where people get themselves in trouble, they'll pay for like an overseas agency to grow their network on LinkedIn. And the agency will say, well, we added a thousand people to your network. And it's a just, a, I call a dead network. It's a ton of people who are not active on the platform, but they're just accepting the request to connect. And then they're like in there once a month right? So what you don't want to do is be like, yes, I just grew my network by 400 and they're all CEOs of mid-level companies. And like, none of them are engaging with you. Like, don't take it personally if they're just not active users of the platform. Does that make sense? Totally. And this is probably an advanced question, but what about LinkedIn ads? Yeah. So we're playing with that right now. I will tell you, um, up until literally my last, um, round of Academy, we hadn't paid a dollar for LinkedIn ads. One of the things that we take pride in is that we've made millions without paying for any LinkedIn ads, but we've had a lot of clients start asking about it. Um, and so we decided, well, let's play with it. And I'm an omni-channel girl, right? Like, listen, we're paying for Facebook ads. We're running our LinkedIn strategy and now we're playing with LinkedIn ads. And I'll say that in full transparency that for the entry level business owner who's not an influencer doesn't have a huge budget to spend on ads linkedin is going to give you your best return on investment and i've made millions starting there but now i've built a really large business with a lot of revenue and i can afford to kick out and compete in the ads space and be multi channel so i just want to say that in full transparency um we played with linkedin ads for the first time with our last launch and click per lead cost us a fourth of what it was costing us on Facebook. And our return was phenomenal. So we're continuing to watch it and play with it. But I will say in full transparency, like we're not the experts on it yet. Um, but we have found that um, the cost per lead is less. And, um, you know, the last thing I'll say on that is our pay in full for our programs is like, record breaking compared to most people's program, like most people who run programs like we do. And I truly believe it's because of the demographic we market to on LinkedIn. So um, like our last launch, which our mid-level program is $5,000. Um, we had like a 67% pay in full. Um, and that speaks a lot to the demographic and the money mindset of the people we're marketing to versus the Facebook ads, you know, the, the folks that were scooping up over on, on Facebook and the, and the money mindset there, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Makes total sense. Um, I just signed up by the way. I just joined. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally in. I love this. Uh, what, what haven't, like, what haven't we covered? I mean, th this is amazing. Um, yeah. well, I, I, I'll leave you guys with this. If I can be concise with it. Um, if, have you read the book, The Blue Ocean? Yes. Okay. Do you remember the case study around Yellowtail, the wine company? Yes. Uh, okay. So I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. I know we're, we're short on time, but I, this I'm, good, I'm good on time if you are. So okay. I, yeah. I have a, I've got a, I've got to jump off in six minutes. Uh, I've got Let's another workshop, but um, what I'll say briefly is that um, before Yellowtail came to market, the wine industry, this is a book about marketing and the blue ocean is a wide open opportunity. The red ocean is competition. It's a blood infested shark and frenzied water, right? Instagram, Facebook, trying to stand out and compete amongst everyone, right? It's, it's a difficult game to play. 
And I liken LinkedIn to the blue ocean. And I think that the, the case study with Yellowtail is a really great example where Yellowtail decided we're not going to compete with the current wine consuming market. This particular audience likes complicated wine. It's expensive. Um, and the larger market in the U S was sugary drinks, cocktails, and beer. We're beer drinking country. Right. And they said, instead of competing with these affluent, complicated wine companies, we're actually going to sugar down our wine. We're going to market it as an easy, non-complicated wine to choose from, um, and actually expand the wine market to a totally new audience. Right. And what they found Within two years, Yellowtail became the number one imported wine above Italy and France into the U.S. They totally, like, if they didn't cannibalize the current wine market, and that's what I want to put out, they actually expanded and created a whole new market for themselves. And I liken LinkedIn to that, is when you move over to that LinkedIn platform, um, it is a wide open blue ocean that's not competitive and it's not... Um, it's not saturated and mm -hmm. it's a fresh market for you to be seen and heard efficiently. Interesting. Would you advise me if I, if I'm going to jump into LinkedIn, which I am, um, should I go like sort through my followers and, and unfollow and all that? I get that question a lot. And I, I would highly recommend instead working on building a new network. Um, because actually you can only grow your network by 5% of your total network number at the moment. So you like, if you've got a large network that's, you can grow by 5%. So let's say you have a thousand in your network, you can grow by, I'm bad with math, but like 50 or like, yeah, yeah 50 yeah. a day. But if you go okay. cutting that number down, you're not going to be able to grow as much. And the thing is you may crank out some content that, you know, Joe Bob actually likes from high school who's not your ideal audience, but when he likes it, and this is cool about LinkedIn, it's like the old school Facebook. When someone likes your content, it shows up in everybody's feed that they're connected with that oh. says, hey, I like this. Do you remember when that used to be a thing on Facebook years yeah. ago? That's yeah. still a thing on LinkedIn. And that, wow. um, and so, so for instance, um, I when I first left corporate and made a post, my ideal audience were like middle-aged females in the health and wellness space. And my old boss who had become a general manager of a large pharmaceutical company for North America liked it and commented. And by the time I'd made the post, flew, flew to the West Coast and got off the plane, I had over 250 comments and none of them were in my network. And that's like for a oh. whole nother conversation, they were all his network. Wow. So you don't want to delete people for the yeah. most part. <laughs> yeah. 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 So good. Gosh, we, we might have to do like a, a, a 202 session. Absolutely. I'm here for it. Cool. Well, I want to be cognizant of your time. Where can people find you? This has been amazing. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it. Absolutely. You can come find me at burnout to all out dot co. That's important. It's not dot com. There's no M on the end. So burnout to all .co, you can come see what kind of free masterclasses I have going on. You can check out our LinkedIn Academy. You can come check out the live event that we're both going to be at. Um, so that's a good place to come find me or come, come say hi and connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah, no, I love it. And I'm going to, I'm going to push this episode up and I'm going to drop it in that go abundance thread, because I think this is the answer that all those guys are looking for. It's amazing. So, and I really did sign up for your class as we were talking. I'm in. Yeah. I love it. I'm so glad. I'll make sure my team reaches out to you. Cool. Well, I appreciate your time. And I wish I would have done this a year and a half ago. <laughs> hey, it's never too late. I'm glad you're here. Go check, well, go. Story. go check my story from stories on uh, the Gary V and the article that Bloomberg put out today. I, I think you will find it really fascinating and you can share it with your GoBundance group. I'm going to go do that right now. I appreciate your time and look forward to the class and look forward to Nashville together. It's yep, going to be amazing. See you in a couple weeks. All right. All right. Cheers. See you, Mike. Bye-bye.